1620, while the Mayflower was in Provincetown, 18 of its men sailed in a small shallop, searching for a place to live. They came to present-day East Ham, where they were met by a group of Nosset. After a brief but violent encounter, the English left towards today's Plymouth. In 2020, we remember this first encounter. We explore its meanings for today and tomorrow. Good evening, welcome to our Sunset Series. Tonight we welcome Karen Rinaldo, a visual historian, creator of the montage we're using with East Ham 400, and creator of the insignia that is gracing so many of our souvenirs. And we also welcome Kevin Doyle, an historian, and together they co-authored In the Wake of the Mayflower. Welcome. Good evening and uh, welcome. Thank you for welcoming Kevin Doyle and I to this uh, presentation. We have a book that we have just completed and the title is In the Wake of the Mayflower, which we will be talking about this evening. Uh, Kevin uh, and I have collaborated on this over the last year and uh, we'll both be uh, talking in, in different segments because the book was actually written in a vignette style. So a few of the aspects of the book we will be highlighting in our presentation. The, the book that we wrote is, uh, we're very happy about that because there's, with all the cancellations that happened as a result of the COVID virus going around this year, uh, there's very little that's left of a concrete nature that can actually be passed down through generations. In this book, we tried to capture the spirit of what's going on this year in, the, in this concept of the 400th uh, commemoration. Because we view the, the landing of the pilgrims and the establishment of Plymouth Colony as the beginning of what became the American way. This book uh, starts with the pilgrims' arrival and the promise of bringing the country together, bringing the indigenous folks in line with the pilgrims, and having a harmonious society. The subject, it's just so rich, it's so involved, and there's a lot to talk about, and eight minutes does not do it justice. Um, so, you know, we, we tried to abbreviate a lot of the aspects that we'd be talking about, um, and we have some, some great work here to share with you. Uh, we have uh, a talk that'll be coming up on the 15th of, September, and that will be a presentation PowerPoint virtual as everything is. There'll also be a uh, virtual art exhibit on the 1st of September for the month of September. Of this year. Yes, of 2020. And that will highlight all of the artwork that was incorporated into the East Ham uh, 400th, com um, it was a commission, so the commemorative piece. And um, next to that, we have the cover design for our book, In the Wake of the Mayflower, The First Encounter. Uh, and we'll be talking about that shortly. And the other piece uh, that is really going to the heart of how this whole book was even uh, a, a thought, uh, it was inspired by the first Thanksgiving, which was a commission back in 1994. And if it hadn't been for that piece, I'm convinced the book never would have happened. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it's a beautiful piece and it has a lot to say for itself. Commissioned by the National Association of the Council of Christian Congregational Churches, it's a testament to, to the society as, as they develop themselves as a congregation of pilgrims and, uh, and colonists. And Very the, briefly, I'll you. mention the Mayflower Compact because that in many ways we consider it to be the cornerstone of the American way. Uh, as you look at it, here was a group of, of uh, well, 100 people on the Mayflower, 44 uh, signers, which included uh, high-ranking uh, government officials as well as servants uh, and everyone in between. So it was a statement uh, that established there is no king here, but we won't have anarchy either. We don't want a monarchy. We want self-sufficiency, we want independence, we are self-reliant. He said we are going to be independent, but we have to act for the betterment of all. And 51, the 41 adult males uh, subscribed to it. There were rich people and there were servants uh, all subscribed to it, as well as pilgrims and the merchant adventurers uh, and the military 
all part of the Mayflower Compact. And that became really the cornerstone of who we are today. You find uh, echoes of that in the Declaration of Independence as well as in the Constitution. That concept is all in the Mayflower Compact. And I just wanted to jump in and mention that as they're leaving uh, Leiden and uh, embarking on this 66-day journey, um, that is where they actually get the title that they are pilgrims from Bradford. And he makes this uh, comment about how they're leaving their homeland and a place that they have worked and lived in for 12 years. And now they know they are pilgrims and they are traveling. And that wasn't unusual. Uh, if you read Tross's Canterbury Tales, written in the 1300s, he talks about April, one that April with the shoe of Sota, the truck of March hath pierced to the Rota. And, and, and then long and folk to go on in pilgrimages, and they would go to Canterbury typically. So they, were, they knew they were pilgrims. So the first Thanksgiving, uh, 1621, as I said, was a commission back in 1994. It was completed in 1995. It took on a life of its own from the moment that it was completed. And it became a teaching aid uh, for scholastic book. Um, I think the cover is, is being seen right now. Uh, and it was alongside four other historical paintings as well. And I think the lesson to be learned here is that it is historically accurate. You see the 53 Mayflower uh, survivors right here and 90 Indian braves. And, and you can count them if you like. You'll find all of them there. So I asked uh, that there be a close-up taken because this is kind of an interesting positioning of the figures. And that was one of the uh, parts of, of creating this piece was that it had to be historically accurate. So a pencil drawing was created, it was signed off by historians, and then I was able to get to the actual painting. Uh, but at the, at the table, you'll see uh, Habermark, Massasoit, and Squanto. And there's interesting, uh, the way they're positioned, because there was a, a, a politics of a sort even going on within the tribe. And uh, Squanto was seen looking off in the distance, Massasoit is looking straight at Habermark. They had a great respect for one another. Habermark is looking at Miles Standish, uh, who he also had a great respect for. They were both military men. Um, but the whole aspect of this shows that they had a friendship and a relationship with the native people. There is an apprehensive stance to the uh, positioning of how the natives are arranged. So the, the visual clearly shows a, a democratic way, uh, the fencing around their uh, fields, uh, the houses, that community spirit, um, but it was a, f a festival that uh, took place in late September, early October, over a three-day period of time. And uh, we're happy to present this as part of our presentation. Uh, we hope that you have an opportunity to uh, view our presentation in a PowerPoint on the 15th of September, 2020, and also a one-month display, visual display, uh, starting on September 1st through the month of September, 2020. Thank you very much. Kevin, uh, it's an honor to be here with you tonight. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, too. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Joanna Hollick. I'd like to share an invitation with you regarding East Ham 400's other series, the Campfire Series. The Campfire Series is a series of hour-long presentations each Sunday in July and August that delve more deeply into some of the topics we discuss here on the Sunset Series. We are happy to announce that our last campfire will be held in person. On Sunday, August 30th, the campfires will occur at the East Ham Windmill at 6 p.m. The same program that was presented on August 23rd will be shared again, featuring John Hamlin, who has led the campfire programs at the Cape Cod National Seashore for the past 20 years, and Linda Coombs of the Aquina Wampanoag Tribe. Admission is free, but registration is required. Please sign up for these events using the form on easthamp400.org. We are looking forward to these events and hope to see you there.